Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, uh, Israeli government spokesman. Today is Wednesday, the 1st of May, 2024, day 208 of this war started on October 7th when Hamas killed more than 1,200 Israelis and seized 253 hostages. In the words of the Prime Minister just yesterday, our war aims remain the same. The Prime Minister said, quote, I want to assure you no ICC action will impact Israel's ironclad determination to achieve the goals of our war with Hamas terrorists. We will destroy Hamas's military and governing capabilities in Gaza. We will release all our hostages and we will ensure that Gaza never poses a threat to Israel again, end quote. I want to draw your attention to three important issues today. The first one is on the International Criminal Court in The Hague's attempt to prevent Israel from defending itself against terrorism. The Prime Minister said yesterday, yesterday evening in some strong remarks, I won't repeat them all here uh, today as um, the words and the video are available on the government's website, but I will share with you a few of the most salient points. Firstly, and I quote, international bodies like the ICC arose in the wake of the Holocaust committed against the Jewish people. They were set up to prevent such horrors, to prevent future genocides. Yet now, the International Court is trying to put Israel in the dock. It's trying to put us in the dock as we defend ourselves against genocidal terrorists and regimes. Iran, of course, that openly works to destroy the one and only Jewish state, end quote. The second quote from the Prime Minister is, uh, quote, I will also, it will also be the first time that a democratic country fighting for its life according to the rules of war is itself accused of war crimes, end quote. And the last quote I wanted to share with you from the Prime Minister is, quote, Six months after the terrible Hamas massacre of October 7th, 80 years after the horrors of the Holocaust, the Jewish state calls on decent people everywhere to reject this outrage by the ICC, to stand with Israel as we fight the barbarians of Hamas and Iran and as we work to secure a more peaceful world. Next, on the visit of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, this morning he met with our President Herzog and later he met with uh, the Prime Minister and other ministers and officials. Israel remains very grateful for his strong support, re the immediate return of the hostages and, of course, the moral clarity in defeating Hamas. Next, on to COGAT, which coordinates the entry of aid into Gaza. The amount of humanitarian aid going into Gaza has significantly increased and continues to increase, as it will do in the coming days. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken will see this for himself while he's here in Israel. Yesterday, 351 aid trucks went into Gaza, 211 pallets containing tens of thousands of meals were airdropped over, over northern Gaza, and 107 food aid trucks went to northern Gaza, 86 with the private sector and 21 with the World Food Programme. The issue has never been about getting aid into Gaza, but about getting aid around Gaza before being stolen by Hamas. So, more food and aid enters Gaza every single day. The quantities amount to around 80% more food. That's 80% more food compared to what was imported into Gaza before the October 7th. So there's been more than 26,000 trucks worth of aid which have gone into Gaza. That's more than 480,000 tons of aid. Food, water, medical supplies. There is no restriction on med medical supplies whatsoever, and of course shelter. The humanitarian aid arrives at Gaza uh, by sea, by air, and by land. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now take your questions, which you should uh, put in the chat. 
uh, together with your news outlet. Thank you very much. This is Dan Williams from Reuters. Has the Israeli delegation gone, or when it will go, to Cairo to hear Hamas's response to the trust proposal? Thank you uh, for that question. So, of course, getting the hostages uh, out of the clutches of Hamas, where they've been languishing for uh, almost 210 days now, uh, is, of course, a very important uh, priority of our government and of all of our people. Um, I won't be able to discuss with you and to share with you the movements of our uh, negotiators and the Israeli team. Uh, needless to say, this is extremely important to us. We are going, doing our utmost. We're doing our utmost to ensure that we get all of our hostages uh, back. Um, the Secretary of State Blinken has said uh, very clearly, at, which has been repeated by um, Foreign Secretary uh, Lord Cameron in the in the UK and by many other leaders, we've gone above and beyond in trying to get our hostages out using uh, diplomatic means. But I cannot share with you any other further details. Thank you. Next questions, just a little bit louder, please. Is Israel closer to normalization with Saudi Arabia? Thank you for that question, uh, Dan uh, Williams. Is Israel closer uh, the, to a negotiation, uh, to a, a, um, a deal with uh, Saudi Arabia? Um, again, uh, this, uh, these are fairly uh, sensitive uh, discussions. What I can uh, say to you is that uh, the Saudis have made clear of their willingness to um, normalize relationships uh, with Israel, and Israel has also uh, done the same thing um, and expressed our willingness to uh, normalize relations with uh, Saudi Arabia. We do, of course, uh, share uh, a similar, uh, the same enemy, that is Iran, uh, the genocidal, murderous uh, organization, the, the fascist organization, uh, uh, country, state of Iran. Uh, when I say Iran, of course, I draw a distinction between the people of Iran who are as much um, victims of uh, the Iranian regime and the regime of Iran. So we share uh, a, a similar concerns, we share similar concerns about uh, Iran trying to destabilize this region, trying to be a force uh, supporting all the terrorism uh, in this region, uh, Hezbollah in our north, uh, Hamas in our south, uh, the Houthis in the Straits of, uh, of the Red Sea. So we share the same enemy and we look forward to those uh, normalized relations. Uh, thank you. Next question, please. Another question from Dan. During the visit by Blinken, was he updated on Israel's Rafa evacuation plan? Uh, Dan, uh, thank you for that question about uh, coordination uh, with the US about Rafa. Look, Dan, as you know, uh, we are side by side, shoulder to shoulder with the Americans. We have been for decades and even more so over these last uh, almost seven uh, months. So. All of our plans are shared and uh, we work together with our closest ally, uh, the US, and you can be sure that uh, when it comes to Rafa, uh, you know, we are committed to remove the last uh, four or five battalions, Hamas battalions in Rafa. We are sharing our plans um, with uh, Secretary of State Blinken. Last question from Dan Williams, Reuters. Will Israel give its retired Patriot air defense system to Ukraine? Thank you for that question, Dan. I've got um, nothing to add on that uh, whatsoever. Um, I would suggest that you contact um, the, the Defense Ministry here uh, to get some clarity on that one. Um, next question, please. Leo Soroka, Washington Post. Can David comment on the report in Walla that Netanyahu told Blinken that if Hamas continues to demand an end of the war, there will be no deal for the release of hostages and Israel would launch an operation in Rafa. Thank you uh, for that question, uh, Leo. Um, the Prime Minister has made uh, extremely clear, as I did in this briefing uh, just a moment ago, our intentions uh, for this war. Uh, they are threefold, and we mean every single one of them. The first one is to destroy Hamas, uh, both politically and militarily. The second one 
is uh, to release our hostages, and the third one is, of course, to ensure that Hamas and Gaza never again can form um, uh, a threat uh, to us, to our country, and to, or to any civilized uh, country. Um, the points you make are of no surprise to us uh, whatsoever, uh, but we are, of course, extremely determined to remove uh, Hamas. Uh, we no longer we no longer are able to live next to this genocidal, murderous organization, and we will take them down. We've already taken down 18 or 19 of their battalions. There are four or five left uh, in, uh, in Rafa. I would remind you that the last two hostages which were rescued uh, from um, Gaza were rescued from Rafa. Our um, special forces removed them in an extremely daring operation from Rafa. So, we know that the terrorists are there, the last four, last four or five battalions. We're going to get uh, civilians out of harm's way, as we've done in the past. We've already secured uh, shelter for them. There is more and more aid going in. Our, our battle, of course, is not uh, with ordinary Gazans. It is uh, with the genocidal, murderous army of Hamas, and they will be defeated. Thank you. Next question, please. Next question. From Frederick Eager, Interplanetary Television, why has the relocation of the Gazans currently in Rafah has not yet started? And what measures Israel took to ensure no Hamas operations will relocate with civilian Gazans hiding as civilians among, among Gazans when the relocation will be underway? Thank you, uh, Fred, for, for that question. So that's an operational question, which obviously I won't be uh, sharing um, in this uh, public forum. Uh, needless to say, uh, on the second part of your question about um, Hamas uh, terrorists hiding among civilians, we are, of course, well aware, well aware of Hamas's uh, strategies. Not only do they hide among civilians, they fight. Uh, from civilian areas, uh, from schools, from hospitals, from mosques, and we are well aware of this uh, uh, possibility, and we are um, ready for it. Uh, next question, please. Lauren Fryer, NPR. Secretary of State Blinken personally visited Jordanian aid convoys headed to Erez crossing and waved them off to their journey. Jordanian officials say the Israeli government then shared the convoys route with settles. Some of those convoys have now been attacked by settles. Do you have comment on this? Is the IDF protecting these convoys? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Lauren. Um, I'm, I, this is the first I've heard of that, uh, of what you're describing there, but I must say it sounds uh, extremely uh, unlikely. Uh, we, the Israeli government, are working uh, extremely hard to get as much aid into Gaza as possible. It's, uh, our battle is not with ordinary Gazans. Our battle is with Hamas. We have no interest in causing them any uh, further harm. Um, so we're trying to get as much aid uh, into uh, Gaza as is possible, as has been uh, evidenced by the lengths we have gone opening uh, more crossing points, um, opening up Ashdod port, uh, working together with uh, U.S. Central Command to build this pier for ship-to-shore uh, deliveries of aid, um, increasing the number of uh, airdrops uh, into Gaza, getting more aid into northern Gaza. Pictures will show and evidence bustling markets uh, in the north and the south. So. You know, we're trying to get as much aid in, in, into uh, Gaza as we possibly can. So those reports, which is the first I've heard of it, uh, sound very extremely unlikely to me. Next question, please. Joel Pollack, Breitbart News. Can you comment on the timing of the State Department accusing five IDF units of human rights abuses in the middle of war against terrorists? Will the Israeli government raise that with Secretary of State Antony Blinken? Thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Um, Israel has, has extremely robust uh, disciplinary um, uh, apparatuses in place already for all of its armed forces. 
we say again and again that ours is the most moral uh, army in the world. We have worked harder than any other army in the history of mankind to uh, restrict damage to civilians uh, in Gaza. Of course, Ga uh, Hamas do the precise opposite. They're trying to maximize uh, civilian casualties. We've worked extremely hard to minimize civilian casualties. We believe here in Israel that where there are uh, any issues uh, regarding uh, rule breaking by anyone, uh, be, the, be they in the IDF or whatever, that we have the apparatuses, we have the systems in place already to provide any sort of disciplinary action that is needed. And we have proved that again and again and again. So our belief is that there is no reason for any of these sorts of actions uh, to be taken by uh, any uh, foreign government. Um, but I'm sure uh, in the discussions between uh, Secretary of State Blinken and Israel, you know, we have an extremely close relationship uh, with Americans. We're working hand in hand. You know, we share the same objectives. It's very important because I think people like to uh, talk about uh, where there are differences you know, in this uh, seven-month conflict, I think what is remarkable is that we share the same objectives of ridding this, uh, this whole region of Hamas and Islamic fundamentalism because we know it's the enemy of uh, coexistence, we know it's the enemy of peace, and we know that they want to destroy Israel. And they also say, uh, when Hamas are asked, they always say the same thing. They say they want to do October the 7th again and again and again. Uh, and the thing is, uh, Joel, we believe them when they say that. We really do believe them, and we are going to stop them doing, which is why that defeating Hamas is um, in our three objectives of this war. Thank you. Next question, please. Jim Williams, Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. Much, David, good afternoon. Much has been made of the humanitarian aid into going into Gaza. Yesterday I spoke with charitable group Meir Panim. They are producing 20,000 more meals a day than normal to feed members of the IDF and displaced Israel. Why is Israel not getting humanitarian aid? Thank you, uh, Jim, uh, for that question. So um, s around 60,000 Israelis have been displaced uh, from their homes in the north, uh, and it, it's been extremely uh, disruptive f uh, for them. The Prime Minister uh, constantly refers to this, particularly in the north and in the south, 60,000 in the north and 60,000 um, from the south. Um, we take their well-being extremely, extremely seriously. We have put them into uh, temporary accommodation, apartments, hotels, but these people need to be brought back home. Uh, and I'm aware of Mayor Panim's uh, excellent work. Um, I'm uh, extremely well aware of them, uh, and I know that they do extremely uh, important work in uh, providing meals uh, for the needy here in Israel, no matter uh, what their uh, religion, no matter what their background, uh, feeding um, poor uh, uh, Israelis, underprivileged Israelis, they do very, very important work. Um, and they have continued to do that uh, throughout this conflict. So I'm very happy to pay tribute to the work of Mayor Panim because I know what important work uh, they do. Next question, please. Hannah Julian, the Jewish press. Hezbollah has said it does not plan to move beyond the litany. Is Israel closer to closing the window for diplomatic resolution to the security situation in the north and returning the residents? Thank you, Hannah. Uh, as you know, we have 60,000 displaced people uh, in our north. We know that Hezbollah, which is, of course, uh, an Iranian uh, proxy, uh, have fired many drones, rockets, uh, and other projectiles uh, towards us. They've caused uh, damage. And um, we have also, uh, I think, um, cleaned out, eliminated much of the leadership of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Now, look, we don't want, we've said this very clearly, that we don't want another conflict on our northern border uh, more than the conflict which is there already. We have no interest in opening up um, a second uh, front 
uh, with Hezbollah, but the UN resolutions are extremely clear. They call for Hezbollah and uh, their forces to be pushed behind the Litani River. We want that to happen diplomatically, but if it does not happen, then Hamas should look very carefully at what happened uh, in Gaza. We are no longer willing in our south, in our north, or anywhere else in this country to live next to genocidal, murderous organizations. They will be pushed back. They will be pushed back if a diplomatic resolution is not found. Next question, please. Henriette Chakar, Reuters. Can you, confor can you confirm reports that the Prime Minister's office held an emergency discussion in recent weeks on the prospect of the ICC issuing arrest warrants against Israel officials. Thank you, uh, Henrietta, for that question. Um, I haven't got anything more to add. Uh, the Prime Minister made his comments uh, yesterday crystal clear. Uh, and um, I think uh, for those comments, he's had the backing, uh, certainly uh, from the US, from, uh, from Jake Sullivan in the US, as well as from Foreign Secretary uh, in the UK, uh, Lord Cameron. Um, so I haven't got anything more to, to those questions. The Prime Minister has made uh, this country's thoughts on any attempt to uh, tie the hands of this country from fighting down from facing down a genocidal terrorist organization. We've made our points extremely clear. You can get the Prime Minister's comments uh, on the government's website. There's a video there as well. For every, all the information you need to know is right there. Uh, next question, please. Another question from Henriette Chaker Reuters. Any official comment on the UN investigation into accusations against UNRWA closing one case and suspending others due to lack of evidence? So thank you uh, very much for that question, uh, Henrietta, about the UNRWA Hamas link, uh, which you're right, it was downplayed in the recent um, Colonna report at the UN. Look, just to repeat uh, again, UNRWA employees took part in the October 7th massacre. 500 of UNRWA's employees in Gaza serve, actually serve in the military ranks of Hamas and other terror organizations. At least 18 school principals in Gaza are members of Hamas's military wing. Over 30 UNRWA facilities in Gaza have been found to contain terror infrastructure such as tunnel shafts. You know, for heaven's sake, a Hamas, a Hamas server farm was found directly under the UNRWA headquarters. It's not a case of a, a few rotten apples, Henrietta. It's a huge, rotten Hamas orchard. UNRWA, you know, like the UN itself, it doesn't even regard Hamas as a terrorist organization. You know, this is not a, this is not a, th th this is not the same for ISIS and Al-Qaeda who are regarded as terrorist organizations. Henrietta, as recently as uh, February this year, 2024, UN Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, very proudly stated that Hamas, I quote this, right? I remember this quote. Hamas is not a terrorist group for us. As you know, it's a political movement. You know, we have shared all this information um, with uh, the United Nations. We did give a lot of details, and it, I think, just further makes the point that this is an organization, when even presented with this organization, just with all this evidence, just seeks to tweak around the edges, uh, saying it's a few bad apples. It's not a, a few bad apples. It's just another reason why this organization can no longer be trusted and alternative arrangements, uh, like, for instance, the World Food Program, which are uh, moving more aid uh, around Gaza than uh, UNRWA are, uh, why UNRWA cannot be reformed. Uh, you know, it is notionally run by Philip Lazzarini uh, in uh, Switzerland, in, in Geneva. But of course, it's uh, the Hamas operatives which really run it on the ground. And, you know, just like an alcoholic uh, that doesn't admit they've got a problem, um, this organization can no longer be allowed to um, be both 
a pseudo-humanitarian organization and a front for Hamas. They work hand in hand. We've given the evidence of the UN. The fact that they don't take it seriously and are not prepared to do a root and branch reform or really to find alternatives is the reason why that we are scaling down our work with UNRWA because this, um, this uh, UNRWA, which should be helping ordinary Palestinians, uh, is instead uh, inciting violence against, against, against Israel through its school movement, where it constantly talks about, teaches children that they will eventually uh, uproot Israel uh, from this land, that they will eventually move back to Haifa and Jaffa. All these things are extremely unhelpful when it comes to a resolution of this conflict. We need to um, work together now. We need to work together to, for a better future for all of the children, Israelis and Palestinians alike. UNRWA simply sustains the existing conflict. Next question, please. Last question, JP Rubin, Breslav Israeli Media Group. Do you think that countries with a faith tradition are more faithful to Israel? Um, thank you for that question, Mr. Rubin. So the uh, Jewish heritage of this country is, of course, extremely uh, important. One of the problems that we have in terms of resolving this conflict is that uh, our enemies, uh, the people that refuse to uh, make peace with Israel, uh, refuse to admit that this is a um, the one and only uh, Jewish state and to accept the validity of that state. Yes, of course, there are, I think, 49 uh, Muslim-majority countries. There are more than 100 Christian-majority countries. There is only one Jewish state, and our heritage and our faith and our faith, Philippe, are extremely uh, important to us and um, are a key part of uh, what sustains us, even this in this very, in, during these very, very difficult uh, times which we're facing right now. Um, any other questions? No more questions. No more questions, great. So thank you very much for joining us uh, today. We've got the next press conference tomorrow and uh, we'll share details with that uh, of that with you. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.